Welcome to Conscious Conversations, a place where East meets West, a place where conversations and ideas will challenge your minds, expand your consciousness, awaken your heart, and make you think more deeply about yourself and the world. everybody. Welcome to Conscious Conversations. I'm Anthony Perfetta, and I'm here with fellow co-host Wes Gordon. How are you today, Wes? Very peaceful today. Oh, good. I'm happy, very happy to hear that. Mm. <laughs> but uh, I guess maybe you can already guess what the topic of our conversation might be from Wes's comment there. You know, the holiday time is really one in which we wish, you know, for peace on earth for peace in the world, for peace uh, for our families, for our friends, for our relatives. And Sadly, it seems we've been praying for peace, wishing for peace, protesting for peace, singing for peace, chanting for peace for eons. But for some reason, it seems like elusive, like we're never really able to find that. And I think there might be different reasons for that. One is that um, I think peace means a lot of different things to many different people. Yeah. And it's a very sort of interesting word that if you ask a bunch of people what peace means to them, you'll probably get a handful of different answers. Yeah. Because to some people, you know, they obviously describe it maybe as the absence of conflict. Or someone else might describe it as maybe the um, lack of noise around them. <laughs> While others, for many people, it might be something mental, like peace is found in like the quieting or the stilling of their mind. And because of that, I think that's why there, it, it might be so elusive in the world around us. Because um, if we're not all striving for the same type of peace, then by default, there's probably some sort of conflict with that. Because some people might just be looking for a lack of noise while others are looking for that still and quiet mind. And so I find that interesting. And so I would actually um, recommend that maybe our, our listeners and our watchers take a moment to think for themselves, what does peace mean to them? Or what does peace mean to you? I'll ask you outright, what does peace mean to you? Because if we don't know what we're looking for, how can we actually find it? Right. So unless we define what that peace is for us, then it will be difficult to find. And while they're maybe thinking about that in their own mind, I'll throw it to you, Wes. Right. What does peace um, mean to you? How do you define it? How do you, uh, what do you think about when it says, someone says, how do you find peace? Yeah, it's a, it's a tricky, tricky word because it's like a, a it's a dynamic state right. of peace. I mean, okay. Because, you know, one of my most peaceful moments, like in meditation, is when I feel connected to source. Okay, there's yes. A, there's a spiritual peace that happens with that, but there's also forms of ego that have peace. There's moments when you're, you know, striving in your ego, and you succeed and accomplish something, and for a brief moment or so, you feel peaceful about what happened. Yeah. But it's not the kind of peace that I'm striving for. I'm looking for something that's more eternal. And lack of turmoil but for some people that i've talked to if they were totally peaceful they would be bored <laughs> i i've actually heard that too like they say oh well everything's the same all the time and there's yeah. no um there's no joy left in life or there's no like excitement maybe it's a better word yeah it's like everything's just like a status quo yeah i need a challenge I need... <laughs> yeah which most and many people do they need that sort of in a way stimulation Yep. Um, but one ways that I often think of peace is um, some sort of like, or in some ways, acceptance. But now when I'm saying acceptance, I'm not meaning in an uncaring or an unfeeling or sort of an indifferent way. Um, I'm sort of aligning in a way with what you were saying in, you know, an acceptance of who we are, mm -hmm. truthfully who we are. Right. Because within us, and I think you were sort of alluding to this type of peace, there's a peace that is beyond understanding. Yes. There's a peace that cannot really be explained until you feel it and come to know it and directly experience it, which I believe is found, through my opinion, um, within ourselves and coming to know ourselves more deeply and coming to accept who and what it is that we truly are. Um, because again, the peace that is found within is beyond the sort of peace that is maybe defined as like a lack of noise or a absence of conflict. Uh, the also 
meaning of acceptance that I have is when I use acceptance, I mean acceptance that life is change. So many people find themselves unpeaceful because they're struggling or fighting against what is going on in the outside world or how things are changing, and they want it to be a certain type of way. Right. So when we accept that life is, in a way, what it is, and that life is changing, it has its ups and downs, mm -hmm. that we cannot change. You know, life it goes in um, the sort of like that wave of, you know, you have pleasant moments and you have unpleasant moments in life. That's just the flow of life. That's just the way it is. It's unavoidable to have. Everything is changing. You know, uh, the world outside us is changing. Yes. Um, the seasons change. Time changes. We change every day. We're getting older. All these sort of things are changing. Our emotions change. Our thoughts change. Yeah. And when we don't accept the truth that change is, then um, we've sort of become unpeaceful because of that. There's sort of like an inner turmoil that is within us when we don't accept that ability or that um, notion that things do change. Exactly. Uh, that's one of the secrets to becoming peaceful for me <laughs> is you have two powers that I can identify with is how you choose to perceive something and then how you choose to react to it. Okay. Yes. Excellent. I love that point. Yes. Sorry. And it's not the same for everyone. But once you start learning that you have those abilities and you can start redefining and not be triggered and not cause yourself suffering 24 seven, because like you said, it's gotta be this way or else, you know, <laughs> throwing your little tantrum tantrums. When you start to learn that that's just the way things flow and you can flow with it, you become more powerful because then you can make clearer decisions for better things and outcomes that are desirable and nourish you and bring you more peace and great health. Oh, yes. And I love how you said flow with it, yes. because that's what I believe the acceptance in a way sort of is. When I using that word acceptance, it's going with the flow of the highs and lows, the, the way of life, you know, the ups and downs. Mm -hmm. Rather than being tossed around by it, we're learning to sort of ride that wave. And that helps us to move through life with a little bit more peace, a little bit more ease, and a little bit more well-being. There's a great, um, well, he's since passed, but there was a great meditation master. His name was Ajahn Chah. And he has said that to find peace, we have to let go of our struggles. We have to stop making war with life. Yes. And when we do do that, you know, because we're often like salmon swimming up the stream of the flow mm. of life, rather than going with the flow, life becomes a lot more um, uh, sort of chaotic and a lot more turmoil. Absolutely. Yeah. I've had a lot of people when I've described things like that. So you've just given up. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> You're just passive. You don't care anymore. Yes. They don't realize the power and strength that comes with understanding that concept and being able to work within it. Right. Similar to the spiritual bullfighter. You know when to step aside. You understand how things are going to play out and what your role is. Yes. And it becomes a great way to live. Yeah. And I, and I like that you said also that thing that some people view it as giving up because that's what I want to stress. When I use that word acceptance, I'm not talking about giving up. I'm not talking about just say, oh, it is what it is and like doing nothing about it. Right. You know, and I'm not talking about, like I said, uncaringness either. It's just the acceptance that, hey, there are things outside of my control. And right. so much we try to control. We try to control almost every aspect of life. And when we do that, that does create a lot um, of unpeace in our, in our mind. And, and in that's our world. what most people think peace is, is when their ego has accomplished everything is absolutely how it should be. Right. I'm in total control. Oh, I feel so peaceful. <laughs> oh, so temporary. Oh, so illusionary. Because yes. that's going to change real quick. Right. And uh, that being said, I also want to just say one more thing. When I'm using that word acceptance, um, I'm not, that doesn't mean inaction either. So there might be things that are happening in a world around us, you know, maybe um, injustice and wars and um, famines and greed and violence and hatred and oppression and all of these things. That doesn't mean that we just sit back and say, oh, well, it is what it is, and let me accept that, too. If there's something we can do to try and change that, to create more peace, then the acceptance does um, 
need maybe a strong action behind it. There are many uh, Tibetan teachers and many Zen masters who, when they were teaching their students, if a strong action was needed, they would take that. It wasn't like they were always just like, oh, well, la di da life yeah. is. They'd, they'd correct their student in a way, maybe with a little bit of uh, strength behind that. But I think we need to take a quick break here, and we'll come back talking a little bit more about peace and maybe how to find it and some ways that you can integrate into your life in finding it. So thank you so much, and stay tuned. Welcome back to Conscious Conversations. I'm here having a conversation with my co-host, Wes Gordon, about peace and how sometimes many people define it in very different ways. But we were sort of touching upon what peace means to us and how it could be found. But one thing that I think we sort of touched vaguely on, but really didn't dive too deep into, but we sort of commented here and there about, is that really so many people go like trying to find peace outside of themselves and they want peace in the external world. Yes. But I really believe that peace is an inside job. And there's, this has been stated in many different ways. I mean, the Buddha himself said that to find peace in the world, you must fir first find peace in yourself. Peace comes from within, do not seek it without. And the um, great poet, uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, he said that nobody can bring you peace but yourself. Yeah. And I truly believe that that is true because when we are a very peaceful person, I believe it overflows and people can sense it and feel it right. in a way. Yep. You know, and um, you know, I've had experiences of maybe people not knowing that I'm a meditation teacher and mindfulness teacher, and they'd say, you know, you seem so peaceful. You're from New York and New Jersey, yes. you know, those sort of things. And um, I, I just, I personally, you know, attributed that to my practice, but right. they sensed something about that. And so I do believe that it flows inwardly and outwardly to the world around us. Absolutely. Yep. And so this has to be found uh, within us. Also, I believe that, um, you know, when, when it's found within, a lot can change because you begin to perceive what might be going on in the world around you. You might see a world of chaos around you, but it's like you could be the centeredness in that storm. Yes. And there's a great Zen master who's, who wrote, I think, this in a couple of his books. His name was, is Thich Nhat Hanh, and he's from Vietnam, and he was, um, you know, he was there through the Vietnam War. He had to leave in exile because he was against the war, so he had to flee Vietnam at the time. And he was actually um, a good friend with Thomas Merton and um, uh, Martin Luther King, and I believe it was Martin Luther King who actually nominated him for the Nobel Peace Prize. But he had said, so when he was in Vietnam during the Vietnam War and the people were trying to like flee in like refugee boats and all of that, he said, when the crowded refugee boats were met with either, by either pirates or the military or storms, he said that if everyone panicked, everything was lost, all lives would be lost, they were done. But he said, if one person on that boat could remain centered and peaceful, that they showed the way for everyone and that they could be saved and would make it out safely. And that I believe that when you can hold that centeredness in the chaos of the world that's going around you, you do become that light and that example for others. Because in, when we come from a peaceful center, we can respond to life rather than just react to life. Exactly. Wasn't it Gandhi that took over a country or liberated a country? Through the peace, being peaceful. Yes. No fighting. Absolutely. No that was his whole way of life. Ahimsa, which means no, not harming and all this. And yeah. he would never confront with any sort of aggression and all of those things. And he did. He changed his country for the better. Um, so the power in this spiritual discipline and these practices, <laughs> even though on the surface they seem kind of flimsy at times, behind the scenes, once they're integrated into your life and become useful to you, that's when these fruits start coming out and your life shifts like you're talking about. Oh yeah. Yeah. You are the peace within the storm. Absolutely. And we begin to manifest what is sometimes referred to as the, the fruits of the spirit. Yes. In that way. And peace is one of those fruits. Yes. Yep. 
And so uh, being able to bring that out of us, we are, are manifesting a powerful energy into the world. Peace is not weakness. No. You know, it, it actually takes great strength to be able to control yourself and to be pe peaceful in the midst of chaos that's happening around you. And to be that shining light is actually um, emanating and radiating great strength out into the world. Again, uh, a big problem that I think, well, a big problem I see, I guess I should say, is that so many find themselves unpeaceful yes. because they're trying again to control everything in the outside world. But we have to give the, up that illusion that we can control everything. Right. You know, th some things will just be as they are. And um, what also happens is that when we do react to what's going on in the world rather than respond, we're often not reacting in the wisest way that we can exactly and unconscious reactions actually create problems where conscious responses from a place of a peaceful heart or a peaceful center actually bring wisdom into the way we um, right. handle things i was having a deep conversation with a gentleman that didn't believe in god and he came to some of our meetings and talks okay and he was asking me and these other fellows that are at this talk why do we think god exists or what's the benefit yeah and he stressed in the talk that he had trouble sleeping at night. Okay. And one of the first things that I could relate to him is the security and peace that comes with this inner knowing that is developed through meditation and prayer and being connecting something to something larger than yourself. And he kind of looked at me dumbfounded because he hadn't realized or it hadn't become that apparent to him that that was one of the fruits of that. Okay. And it was like a matter of fact to me and the, the people that I was around. Yeah. And, um, I mean, there's multiple, for those of you that aren't familiar with that term, fruits of the spirit, there are many of them, love, peace, forgiveness, all these sort of things, compassion, charity. but a charity, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, peace is considered one of these things that is a quality an innate quality of the spirit, which is why I say that there's a peace within us that is beyond understanding, because if it's a quality of that spirit and yes. that spirit is within us, you know, you, we are made in the image and likeness of God, the kingdom of God is within you, your Buddha nature is within you, all of these phrases about this eternal truth being within oneself means that we can tap into and connect to those qualities at any time. Right. So now that we sort of did touch and are going in this direction, how do you think we can find peace? in our lives and hopefully bring it out into the world. Got to be in the silence. <laughs> Got to be for me in the silence because the world is going at such a crazy, hectic, noisy pace that that would be the quick escape route to it. Yeah. Is get in, be still and listen. Yes. Or the voice of God, the inner voice. Yeah. And I totally am in line with you on that one. I, I'm probably, again, biased in my opinion, but I think <laughs> going into the science, being meditative, and the practice of meditation is very important to finding peace. Yeah. Um, the great uh, Chinese teacher Lao Tzu, or Lao Tzu, sometimes it's pronounced, um, said that if you are at peace, you are living in the present moment. And that's why I think meditation can be very powerful to um, connecting us to peace because it helps us to be present to the moment, present to reality, yes. present to life. And it also helps us to get still enough to connect to that inner voice, that inner spirit, that inner guide, yes. that inner soul self that is the embodiment of these qualities and these fruits of the spirit, such as peace itself. There's a scripture that backs that up. Says, okay. If your mind is stayed on thee, I keep you in perfect peace. peace. Beautiful. So, yep. Yes. There you go. And uh, I'm a firm believer in that. And so being within, settling ourselves, entering that silence is a way for us to bring that, um, bring that peacefulness out into the, our life and out into the world. I also believe that getting out in nature itself can help people to become peaceful, or at least for a moment, hopefully it can carry them in. But while they're out in nature, there is evidence through science and research that it does help with stress, helps with anxiety, helps yes. to calm our mind, helps to um, slow down our mind, and helps, and overall, it does have many beneficial health benefits. I'm also a believer that um, disconnecting from technology every once in a while, can, in today's age, yeah can be very helpful tricky. in bringing peace to our life. Very tricky. <laughs> very tricky. Mm -hmm. Very tricky because the problem with technology is it's being built to create addictions within us. The, these corporations have actually gotten mm. together with psychologists yeah. in order to make these programs and these platforms such as um, like Facebook and Twitter and social media platforms addictive to users. 
And there's a there's a great um, documentary on Netflix called Our Social Dilemma yes. for anybody that wants to learn about this sort of problem with technology more. But if we can sort of cut back on our use every once in a while, you know, we don't have to have our phone attached to our hip or our ears 24 hours a day. Right. So maybe on a weekend, you just disconnect for a few hours from the internet, from social media, from your phone, and spend more quality time with your friends and your family and those that you love I mean, that would bring a lot more presence to our relationships. The people would feel more connected. And it would really, in the long run, I believe, help us to be a little bit more peaceful in our life because it's, like I said, the technology itself is creating addictive behavior. And addictive behavior is not peaceful behavior. Right. <laughs> and the other thing is um, don't let other people sort of pull you into your storm, their storm, I should say, right. not your storm, because the behaviors of others and what's happening around you can sometimes cause us to become um, unpeaceful. But, you know, there's many quotes. Again, I could use quotes by the Dalai Lama who actually said, don't let the behaviors of others destroy your peace. And St. Francis de Sales, who actually said, uh, do not lose your inner peace for anything whatsoever, even if you find the whole world becoming upset. And John <laughs> Lennon said, give peace a chance. He did. <laughs> I couldn't go without saying that. <laughs> and I'm glad you did throw that in because I think we all need yes. to give peace a chance, especially in today's world. I mean, there's a lot of turmoil, there's a lot of unrest, there's a lot of things going on. And if more of us could go inside, try to connect to that peace and bring it out to the world around us, it would be better. And another practice we could do is really begin to focus more and more on love, compassion, and understanding. Because I also believe that uh, peace is a fruit of love and understanding itself. Um, when we are acting from love, knowing we are acting from love, regardless of how others are treating us, I believe we move through life with a little bit more peacefulness as well. Absolutely. Um, and coming from that place is very, very important. And there, and since you threw out a singer, I could actually throw out a quote by Jimi Hendrix, who said, when the power of love overcomes the power of force, or the love of force, when the power of love overcomes the love of power, uh, the world will know peace. Yes. So we have a couple of uh, wonderful singers and uh, songwriters out there talking about peace itself. But if you haven't tried to find peace in your daily life, I encourage you to go within, maybe disconnect from technology. We thank you all for listening, for tuning in today. If Let us know what peace means to you. Go to the Conscious Conversations Facebook page, add your comments or posts there. You can also post under the video. And just let us know how you find peace, what peace does mean for you and what your definition of it. We thank you so much for always tuning in, for watching and listening. And we look forward to another uh, episode with you next week. And um, have a blessed and beautiful week. May each day be filled with an abundance of love, happiness, and peace.